All right, we're just going to dive straight in. Uh, all right, so what uh, what I want to do today is this list here. So this is um, the, the items that I think that we're missing. Oh, actually, there's a couple of things I, don't, I need to put in here, which is collision, collision detection. When, when, when the player tick enters, leaves, contained. So I want to know those three states. And the reason why I want to know those three states is because when the player leaves the, the, the ball, then they lose. And if they enter the ball, that's when... Actually, I, maybe I just need to know if it contained or when it leaves. Maybe I don't need to know. Let me just put that in brackets there. Anyway, so this is kind of the laundry list of things that I want to get to today. Um, this one here is a sort of optional one. So maybe we can sort of put that down here for, for just now. So we'll try and get to it, but we'll, we'll see how we get here. Uh, but basically, I want to uh, have that pause at the start that waits for the user to tap the screen to play. So that's kind of the game over screen. Uh, speed up the rotation of the tick. It's really slow. So if we look at the, the, the tick just now, uh, first of all, the, the ball moves really slowly and then the tick moves even slower. It just takes forever to, to get there. Uh, it just takes a very, very long time. So we need to speed that up. Like I said, collision detection. So when the player's tick uh, leaves or is contained inside there. Pardon me. And then finally, uh, this one here, which is don't use rotation for the yellow ball because it just takes so long. It's supposed to be like a, a tap game. And that just takes too long. In between uh, taps, it's going to take forever. So I really don't want to do that. And we also need to uh, figure out how to move on to the next level. So you need to figure out how to move on to the next level uh, as well. So that's kind of what we, we need to, to figure out for today. So I'm going to put this off to one side and we will make a start. All right. Um, so first things first, um, I don't, so this is a rotate ball script. Uh, I am going to change that so that we're going to do the, the, um, the, the, the movement of the ball. Um, so we're not going to use rotation anymore for the ball. Uh, we're still going to use it for the tick mark, obviously, because the tick mark has to, to, to rotate around the, the, the uh, lock face. Um, but, uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, we'll see that. Okay, so rotate ball. So we need a uh, public animation curve uh, scale in. Public animation curve scale out public and then this is going to be um, animation curve um, opacity in public animation curve opacity out okay so that is going to be that um, so our scale in is going to be a kind of, well, it's probably just going to be linear. So our scale in, uh, we're going to scale from 0.5. So I'm going to drag that up from there from 0.5 to 1. So that's going to be our scale. And then our scale out. Our scale out is going to be slightly different. It's going to be more of a, a kind of a dip. So we want to go from one. So our current skip is one. Um, I think we can change that there. Yeah, we can do that there. And then this is going to move down to 0.5, roughly 0.5. Yeah, that's good enough. And so it kind of looks a bit like that. It goes, it kind of makes it a bit bigger and then does a kind of whoop and then does that. That looks okay. Uh, okay, and then our opacity in, our opacity in is going to go from 
0 to 1 because we're going to fade straight in and then our opacity out is going to be the exact opposite of that so it's going to fade from 1 1 let me see if I can get it in 1 there you go 1 and this is going to go down to 0 which I'm hoping is 0 uh, come on there we go zero okay so that is our um, our movement so instead of having the rotation uh, so the rotate me is no longer rotate me uh, so we'll, we'll come up with a different um, one from that um, but uh, actually it's going to be uh, I enumerator um, fade actually it's going to be public void um, start fade in action finish fin ished fade float and then duration I'm going to do that and then I'm going to have public void start fade out action finished fade float duration and then uh, it's just going to do a normal fade so the reason why I have this is because this is our public interface so I don't want to expose all these curves and things to other people I don't want people to, to have to, to enter these values themselves uh, I want to, to control that. So that's why I'm wrapping it around these public methods here, which is the start fade in, start fade out. And because I can do that, I can then do things like um, uh, do fade. So this is going to be our fade in. So that's scale in, uh, opacity in, duration. And that's going to be our start coroutine do fade. Okay. So that we don't have a do fade just now, which is why it's that right squiggly there. Uh, and then we're going to do the exact same thing, but instead of scale in, we're going to have scale out and opacity out. Okay. And that's going to control our sort of skip in. So rather than having this rotation, um, I, um, I don't need to have... Uh, this rotation here um, but I do need to put it at that target rotation so I need I need this line here I need this target rotation so I'm gonna have a I enumerator do fade and then it's gonna take an animation curve scale curve and animation curve, uh, opacity curve, and then duration. And that should satisfy uh, this one here. But of course, now we have a red squiggly line here because we don't have a yield return statement. So we need to have a yield return statement so that we can uh, <clears throat> return something back from our um, coroutine because the coroutine kind of works. Uh, it's not working in the background, but it it ticks, it gets called and then it, it performs an action then immediately leaves. It doesn't stay inside the, the loop. Uh, it only does the loop when we call the, the routine, but of course that we don't call it, it's unit that calls it. Anyway, I did a video um, somewhere, maybe up here somewhere uh, that, hand, that shows about coroutines. Anyhow, uh, okay, so our target is this one here so this is our target rotation um, and so our transform rotation is going to be to here so this is our fade and um, our direction um, we don't need a direction uh, or do we Actually, I think we do need direction as well. Don't. 
So we need duration and we also need float direction. And so I can pass in direction to here as well. That's okay. It's just one extra parameter. And I'll take that there. And paste that into there. So now I have my direction as well. Because I need to know. Yeah, I guess we need to know if we're going backwards and forwards from there. Because uh, we are we don't want to rip off the player. We want to, to get them to do the, the rhythm where it's going that way. They hit something and then they go back that way. And then it kind of goes back and forth like that. Because the whole point is it's supposed to, it's supposed to mimic a school... Um, a lock, you know the the rotary dial ones. Uh, okay, um, and uh, we have our time. So we have float time equals zero while time is less than one. Um, so our time gets incremented by delta time times uh, the duration. Um, no. Because if I divided by duration, because if I do this by two, I want the delta time divided by two because it's going to take twice as long. And if I do it by 0 0.5, that's going to effectively multiply by two, which means it's going to do it faster. Okay, and uh, so that's that satisfied there. So now our scale is dependent on um, what the, the value is at the animation scale. So I'm going to do this in sort of two stages. So I'm going to do current scale equals um, scale curve dot evaluate, and then you specify the time, which is going to be time. And then I'm going to do oh, uh, current opacity equals opacity curve dot evaluate time. And um, then I'm going to say transform dot local scale equals new vector three. And then we're going to pass in current scale, current scale, current scale. Just to make it scale in the, the same direction. Now, the current opacity is slightly tricky because what I need to do is I need to say color. Actually, I can just do var uh, color equals color dot um, new color. And then you can specify one, 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 and then alpha, which is going to be our current opacity. And then I'm going to say, um, do I have access to the rotation ball here? I don't have access to the rotation ball. So um, I'm going to grab it here. So I'm going to say um, sprite renderer equals get component in children. Sprite renderer, and then I'm going to say sprite renderer dot color equals uh, color. Now what we can do now is we can just actually just take that out and just put that in there, so we do it on one line. And so now our our ball will now animate um, correctly. So what I I think I want to do though is um, I want to set the current when we go into the do fade I want to set the current opacity to be well okay I, th I think what I can do is instead of just having the, the balls current opacity being uh, seen uh, what I can do is oops I can just make it zero just now so it defaults to zero so we're just left with a circle collider, so we can still see it uh, when we, we click on ball. We can still see that there is indeed a, a circle collider there. But this will just do the right thing. And then for this one here, um, we, we're not going to call this, but I'm just going to leave it in just now. 
uh, because I do need to know where um, this one gets called from. So this gets called from here, which is show tick. Okay. Um, so instead of ball pivot start rotation, I'm now going to do ball pivot dot start fade in because we're fading in the ball now. And this is going to be show tick. And then the duration is going to be whatever the duration is. So we're going to make this um, one second. And the direction is going to be one just now because we don't we don't have a change in, in direction yet. Uh, that's going to come in just a second. So hopefully, hopefully now this will just make the ball appear in one second. Okay, well that kind of worked. Because it is scaling this one here, and I don't want this one to scale, I want this one to scale. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go down here and say var ball object equals sprite renderer, oops, Uh, actually, let's just make that transform. Let's make that the, the transform. So we'll call it ball transform is that. So the ball transforms local scale is going to change. Not the not this object's transform, uh, but the ball transform is going to change because um, the the rotation um, the rotation object is the thing that we want to move. But the ball, the shape of it, is the thing that we want to scale. We don't want to scale the point, because if we scale the point, that's going to scale depending on where it is in relation to the parent. If I'm making myself clear here, probably not. But you'll, you'll see what I mean when I, when I play this. You'll see that the ball will now scale in place. So you see the ball's now scaling in place. But of course, that's far too slow. We need to make that a little bit faster. So instead of um, that, we'll make it half a second. Actually, sorry, that's the that's the direction. So we'll make it half a second. So now the ball will appear like that. There you go. That's much better. A lot faster. Although we don't actually call show tech, I don't know if, I don't know if you've noticed that. Um, so we need to pass in, uh, this is the finished fade, so we need to pass that in. Uh, so we pass that in there and then we do action finished fade, that there. And then at the very end there we do if finished fade, not equal to null. And then we call finished fade. And we do the same thing here. Yeah, that's all we do. Finished rotation is that equal to that. So now we can get rid of this function here. We just don't use it anymore. And uh, we can get rid of start rotate as well, because we don't need that anymore. And so now the ball will immediately show and then start the rotation. That's the general idea. There we go. Sweet. Okay, that's a lot faster than waiting for the, the, the ball to appear. Okay, so what have we got done in here? We've got use rotation, don't use rotation, so we've done that. And we've done that, and we've done that. So that's that's good, that's done. So we can move that to the, the done pile. Okay, um... All right, so what we need to do is speed up the rotation of the tick. That's not too difficult to do because that is actually part of uh, the rotate tick. And so the angle speed is that. So we can do public angle speed minus 45. Um, and for our ball controller, we can say 
um, public float angle um, tick speed equals, and we'll make it 60. And we will say tick pivot dot speed. Oh, uh, tick pivot is a game object. Um, okay, not to worry. Uh, we can make that rotate tick. We can make that a rotate tick. And we can change that to game object dot set active. And we can then say tick pivot dot speed equals tick speed. And that shouldn't change anything inside the game controller. It should just still be there. Oh, no, it didn't tick pivot. So we need to drag tick pivot in there. Okay. And so tick speed is now 60. So we can change that whenever we want. So that's 60. Let's change that to 90. Maybe 90 is a bit better. Yeah, that feels better. So 90 feels a lot better. Okay. All right, awesome. Good, 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 good. Um, so that is another thing you can tick off the list. Tick, see what I did there? Okay, and now what we need to do is figure out the collision detection. So, um, I have uh, this collider here uh, doesn't have a rigid body on it. Now, I need to have a rigid body on one of these. So, I'm going to add it to this one here. So, I'm going to do rigid body 2D. And I don't want it to be affected by gravity. So, um, um, yeah, I just don't want it to be gravity scale. Can I change that to zero? Um, Well, that's okay. Rigid body. I think that's okay. I think I can leave it as freeze position X and Y. Um, rotation is fine because I don't think it will rotate as a ball anyway. I mean, who cares? You're not going to see it. Uh, but the... Uh, oh, that's the, that's the tick, isn't it? Um, I did that in the wrong one. Wait a minute. Uh, it's got to be in the ball. And so we make that rigid body 2D. Um, freeze position, because we're, we're going to control the position. So just to make sure that's working okay. Yeah, there you go. Um, yep, yeah, that's okay. And then the tick is going to be a trigger. So I can do... Uh, all right, uh, on, what is it, uh, public void on collision enter 2D. And I want to do public void on collision exit 2D as well. So I only have two things that I can collide against. So I don't need to check and see if it's, you know, this alien or that alien. It's going to be that collider and that's it. So I'm going to just going to write out console. Uh, let's do print. Uh, entered collision. Print. Exited collision. Okay. And we'll put on the console. 
and we'll see what we get. Hopefully this will just work. I know people have, have issues with... Uh, uh, yeah, it doesn't work. Of course it doesn't work. Um, why does it not work? Um, uh, whether the collider behaves like a trigger or not, that's because I've got on collision enter. Okay. On Trigger enter 2D, public void on trigger exit 2D. Okay, let's try that. Let me get rid of that. All right, okay. <clears throat> Rookie mistake. Oh, it's only dud. There you go, much better. <laughs> that also did not work. Um, is it because I'm on the wrong thing? Let me... Oh, wait, 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 wait. I think the problem is... Yeah... I'm on, I'm on here and this has the collision here. Uh, okay. I think that's the problem. Um, I think. No, that makes sense. Okay, let me let me add a, a quick um, create, and then let's call this uh, tick collider. Right, we'll tick trigger, and we'll add that. We will add that. We will add that to here. Tick trigger. Uh, reload. And um, I'm going to take uh, rotate tick. I'm going to take these two out of here, and I'm going to put them in here um, because I suspect that this isn't getting hit because it's the parent object and it doesn't have a collider on it itself. And I don't want to put a collider on it because it's just a the uh, yeah. That's why. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. So let's work with that. Uh, in um, take state. So the state is moving inside ball, exiting ball. Um, that's a sort of three states. Now, whether we need them or not, um, I don't know. But let's have a tick state state. And we'll do void awake. And it will be state. Actually, we can just do state. State equals moving. So, um, yeah, we're in the moving state. So by default, we're in the moving state. Although we do want to reset that at some point. Um, to do uh, build the T to reset this. Um, all right, so when we enter it, then the state is equal to uh, inside ball. So that's our state when we enter the ball. And then when we leave the ball, 
uh, state equals uh, xdingbo, uh, and we also need to tell somebody <laughs> that that happened. So what I think we'll do is we will have um, uh, public action um, tick exit. And then we'll need to add system. And we'll see if tick exit is not equal to null. Oops. Tick exit. Duh, that's it. So if we have um if we have an action called tick exit and it's not equal to null, then we're gonna call it on the trigger exits because we're not really interested in um, in this unless they're inside the ball. So um, I'm gonna have a public bool is inside ball return, oh, that'd be a get return state equals inside ball. So if they're not inside the ball, then it's going to return null. Um, public public bool um, uh, state dot uh, existing ball. Um, So we don't want that is 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 redundant. Don't use the word is. It's bad. So if the if the ball sorry if the tick is inside the ball, this is going to return true. And if it's missed the ball, then it's going to return true here. Okay. And we also need a uh, public void reset. And reset is just going to say state equals tick state dot moving. Okay, and that is our tick trigger. So we've got the ability to reset this now. Okay, now our rotate tick is going to have to say um, void awake. So this is our setup part for our. Uh, for our rotation, so our tick rotation, we're going to say var, um, and this is going to be tick trigger equals get component in children tick trigger. Uh, and again, we're caching this at the very start, so you may think that this is this is an expensive uh, call, and it is an expensive call, but it's something that happens once per game. So anytime you enter this game, this happens once. So you may, the chances are you will never see it, see a stutter. Um, if you do this quite a lot, uh, but we're doing it once for one object, so. Or a couple of objects. It's not going to cost a, a lot as far as this is concerned. Uh, okay, so that's our tick trigger there. And then we're going to say uh, tick trigger dot uh, tick exit equals, and then we're going to give it a method here. So we're going to say uh, missed the ball. And we're going to have a void missed the ball function down there. And um, yeah, that's that. Um, we probably also want to have a hit the ball. So, I want to say, don't want to do it on this. Uh, no, let's do it on this. So that's our rotation there. I want to say if input dot um, okay. So here's the problem. I don't know if I want to do this action on this object here. I 
think I want to do this in the controller. So if I've missed the ball, then I want to pass that information further up the tree. So I want to say public um, um, hmm. I don't want to do this. Hmm. What if so I have this missed ball here. So if I missed the ball, I really want to know about it. I want to know it about it immediately because I want the game to stop, basically. But I also want to know if the player is inside the ball and they press the, the mouse down, which is this one here. So our game controller Um, our game controller um, our game looks like this um, so I want to add box collider 2d okay and Am I making this too complicated? I think I might be making this too complicated from a component. Let's just think about this. So, uh, let me try something just now. Okay. <laughs> uh, so if I do... On mouse down. When the button is pressed over the GUI element or collider. Okay, I think I do need a collider on here. I was I, I was on the right lines. Okay, so I want a um, box collider two D, and um, whoa, crazy! What did I do there? What? Oh, that was just weird. Uh, okay, so I want a box collider that, that goes over this section here. Sure. Uh, if I go to back to my scene, you see that the box collider is here. So I want to make this um, uh, as wide as that and then sort of that tall. But kind of a little bit further down. Um I show um, no I can't okay, let me see what that looks like in in here um, okay that's the uh, I think that's the top of the box collider yeah, it is. Okay. I don't know if you can see that, but there's the box collider there. <laughs> that line there uh, that I'm looking at anyway. So that's where I want it to be. So I'm going to make a copy of this component. And then when I go back into the edit mode, uh, I'm now going to paste component values. And then that's going to paste the component values. And now I have my line here. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. That's a little bit better. That line there, that's the topmost there, because I don't want to. I don't want to be able to click on this bit up here. I just want you to be able to click on this down here when you're playing the game. Okay, so uh, a rotate click. Um, so instead of having this up here, I'm now going to say, let's make this uh, private. Uh, tick trigger. So let's make that tick trigger there, tick trigger. And 
and now it becomes quite easy because now I can say um, public bool uh, inside it becomes easier if you can spell return if um, let's do tick trigger uh, equals null uh, let's return false otherwise let's return tick trigger dot inside ball and then we do the same thing why is that oh yeah uh, and then we do the exact same thing for missed ball okay so you either inside the ball or you missed the ball uh, and if you miss the ball, well, actually, you probably don't even need to miss the ball. That just needs to get called. Um, so if you miss the ball, what I'm going to say is, I'm going to say public action missed the ball. I need to add system again up here. Uh, we're going to miss the ball up here, so I'm going to then say if uh, it's not equal to null, miss the ball. And then this is going to call the game controller, because the game controller is the one that controls everything. Now, I'm sure you could probably do the, all this in one script, but um, I, I just want to have it in, in these separate scripts here. So, game controller. Uh, there's our uh, tick pivot there, so uh, inside... Uh, I've got my start here, void awake. Uh, I'm going to say tick pivot missed ball equals missed the ball. And now I'm going to have a private void missed the ball. So if you missed the ball, that's all well and good. So if you have... Um, if you are now inside the ball, then I want the ball to move to another position. So I need to have uh, a float direction equals one. So if you are inside the ball, tick pivot dot inside the ball. So now we have our inside the ball. So if you're inside the ball, uh, we also need to, def uh, to do, are we actually playing the game? So if you're inside the ball, uh, do game reset for next level. So if you're inside the ball, do that. Uh, if you've missed the ball, to do, uh, game over. Okay. So, uh, where are we? Void to system action. Missed the ball. It's that there. Because I used brackets. <clears throat> and I just wanted the function name before when I specify the action. Okay, so now hopefully everything just compiles. There should be no errors when we. Okay. Did I take those out? Tick trigger. Oh, I did. Okay, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> all right, I was wondering why there was no uh, errors there or no output. Okay, so if you're inside the ball, you're doing that. So exiting the ball. So let's see. Let's check to see if you're. Um, inside the ball. Uh, let's do, um, so if you're inside the ball, um, uh, it's going to be, uh, let's do, so, um, int current level equals one. So current level equals one. Um, and then 
int um, taps left equals one. Okay. So every time you tap, every time you tap, you uh, decrement this taps left. And then this current level is the number of taps you need to progress to the next level. Okay. Um, so we're going to do taps left minus minus. So if taps left equals zero, do the celebration. Else, um, you want to update the text. So the text is going to be uh, public text, oops, uh, level text, public text, and this is going to be uh, dial text. So it's the text that's inside the center of the dial. And of course, we need to add our UI components to that. So let's let's make this level 10. We'll make this level 10, which means that we need 10 taps. And get rid of them. Uh, okay, so our level text, our level text is the one that says level up there. Um, so our level text, level text equals level, actually it's just going to be one, whatever the level is. So it's going to be dial text dot text equals taps left dot two string. And then we need a private void do celebration. So we haven't, we haven't done this yet but we'll get to it. Uh, so every time we uh, have a number of taps left, we do that. So our start, we need to say uh, level text dot text text equals level and then it's going to be uh, current level uh, dial text dot text equals and it's taps left dot to string okay uh, and that's what happens when we awaken the game so the game awakes and then we we set those those values there and then in our game controller um, we have our current level which is this one here. So we're going to call this level text. And then this means this one here is going to be our dial text. Uh, so our game controller, our dial text uh, goes into here and our level text goes into here. And let's see what we got here. So hopefully when we, we tap inside the dial, so the idea is that when we tap inside the dial, we check to see if you're inside the ball. If you are inside the ball, we decrement the amount of taps needed. Uh, if you are left with zero taps, we're going to move you on to the next level. And if um, not, we're going to change the, the, the things there. So we need to um, um, we do move to another... Actually, let's do that just now. So we need to move our rotation, our, rotate our ball. So we do direction times equals minus one. So we want to reverse the direction. And then we want to do, um, start fade out. And then that's gonna be, uh, we want to know when the, the ball has faded out. So we're gonna do ball faded out and that's all we need to do for there. And then we're going to do private void. So our ball is faded out. And uh, now what we want to do is we want to change the direction. So we're going to then say uh, ball fade in. So we want to fade the ball in. And we also want to say ball pivot 
dot reset. Oh, but ball pivot is just ball pivot. Rotate ball. Um, no, we want to reset the. We want to say uh, tick pivot dot reset. So we need to create a reset for our rotate tick. So we need to have a, let's do that uh, here, public void reset, trigger dot reset. <clears throat> and that will reset that. So basically remember reset does it, all it does is it says that we're now in the moving state so that we know that the, the player isn't um, going to lose. Um, so I need to turn that off immediately. Because they're going to lose the trigger there. So inside game controller, I think there's going to be a bit of an issue here. So miss the ball. Okay, miss the ball doesn't doesn't have anything in it yet. So hopefully this is just going <laughs> to just going to work. Um, when has that ever happened in the history of this channel? Has anything just ever worked? Uh, I wasn't ready. Well, kind of worked. Uh, something kind of weird. Oh, do you know what it is? I know what it is. <clears throat> okay, so inside the rotate ball, this is doing the fade. Um, but really what we want to do is we, we want to do the fade only if we're doing the fade in. So I'm going to say true in there. And at the very end here, I'm going to say bull move, um, move ball. <clears throat> so the default is going to be false. Then I'm going to say if move ball do that okay and so uh, we still have this um, single function that we call inside here but uh, instead instead of always moving the ball because that's what's happening uh, we just move it the once so hopefully this will <clears throat> second time lucky Okay, so the ball's going, the tick's going the wrong way. But that's okay, things are moving. And it is working. We don't have the, the mouse down for everything else, but... Uh, yeah. Okay, we're at minus one, that's fine. Okay, so the, the rotation needs to go the other way for the, the tick. Um, rotate tick, so uh, angle speed is that, so we don't have direction here, so I'm going to say uh, public, uh, public float direction <clears throat> equals 1, I think it's the other way that we need to do it, but uh, let's, yeah, no, that's fine, uh, and then that's going to be times direction. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, and then, <clears throat> sorry, frog in my throat. And then inside the game controller, uh, when we change the direction uh, of here, what we can then see is we can do uh, tick pivot dot direction equals direction. So we just move the, the, the pivot back and forth. So hopefully this will, uh, I keep saying hopefully. I don't know why I keep saying hopefully. Fingers crossed. 
So now that the should go the other way, there we go. Uh, we just need to get it to do a rotation based on uh, where the player is, but like what the new direction is. Uh, based on the, the current player. So we need to kind of know the, the rotation of that. Um, but that's okay. That's fine for a first try. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Okay, so now that the now that the the that's done, we need to have like a celebration. So the celebration uh, is going to be done inside this function here. Um, all right, so let's see what, <clears throat> what we've done here. So collision detection: when the player enters, leaves contained. We've kind of done that, um, and. Let's get rid of that. <clears throat> uh, figure out how to move on to the next level. Wait for the user to tap the screen for game over. Okay, so we're still kind of on this celebration thing. Um, what how are we doing for time for this video? Oof, we're an hour already. Yikes. Uh, I do apologize. Um, didn't realize it was that long. Yikes. Um, okay, I'm going to wrap it up then. <laughs> um, We've got kind of got quite far with this uh, today, um, and I'm gonna leave it for uh, next time. So um, yeah, I hope you uh, enjoy the video, and uh, I will catch you in the next one. Uh, hi guys, that was a bit of a long one, uh, and I don't normally <laughs> I try and keep the videos down. I don't. <laughs> It's a complete lie. It's whatever, however long it takes. And I just got kind of carried away with what I was doing there. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, thank you uh, for, for taking the time to watch it. I know an hour is a long time out of anyone's day. I mean, I suppose you could fast forward uh, the dull bits with me going. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, it's still quite a long video. Um, so anyway, if you liked the video, uh, if you wouldn't mind giving me a thumbs up. Um, if you didn't like the video, leave me a comment below and let me know what I was doing that irked you. And uh, if you liked the video and you haven't already subscribed and you want timely reminders, then please uh, subscribe. The button's on the page somewhere. And you also hit, need to hit that notification bell because YouTube. <sighs> I don't know why. Uh, but it really helps out the channel. Um, so I do appreciate that as well, uh, if you wouldn't mind doing that. And uh, yeah, that's it. I will catch you in the next video where we'll uh, hopefully finish this uh, game off, which I know that I've said hopefully means that that won't happen and it will be uh, two videos down the line from there. So anyway, uh, thank you very much and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.